remaining lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us today for our Falcon 9 launch of the European Commission's Galileo L-12 mission from Florida. Falcon 9 is set to lift off, lift off from Kennedy Space Center's launch complex 39A in just about nine minutes from now. My name is Yo Mezo and I'm a propulsion engineer here at SpaceX. T today's mission is a special one. Not only is this mission expected to be our 337th overall mission to date and 42nd mission of the year, but this will also be the second 20th flight of a Falcon 9 booster, which comes just about two weeks after reaching that milestone for the first time. Today, we won't be showing any stage two or deployment views at the request of our customer. We also won't be attempting to recover the first stage due to the additional performance required to deliver the payload to medium Earth orbit. While more common during our Falcon Heavy missions, the last time a first stage was expended during a Falcon 9 mission was 146 flights ago in November of 2022. On most Falcon 9 missions, enough propellant remains in the first stage after stage separation to enable landing, recovery, and ultimately future missions. Since expending a booster is so rare, we wanted to take a minute to recognize what this booster has enabled over its 20 missions. Let's meet the vehicle and learn a little bit more about what makes Falcon 9 and this particular booster special. A Falcon 9 is a two-stage rocket that is designed and manufactured by SpaceX for the reliable and safe transport of people and payloads into Earth orbit and beyond. It is also the most flown U.S. launch vehicle ever. It is also the first and currently only orbital class rocket capable of reflight. The entire vehicle stands 229 feet tall or about the height of a 21-story building. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage, also referred to as the booster. Not only is the first stage the largest part of the rocket, but it's also the portion of the rocket that we attempt to land for future reuse. Reusability is a critical part of our goals of reducing the cost of access to space and making life multi-planetary. To that end, we are working towards qualifying our fleet of Falcon boosters and fairings to support 40 missions each. The specific booster made its debut in June of 2020, and since then it launched about 200 spacecraft as part of our rideshare program. It supported 13 Starlink missions to help connect people all around the world with high speed, low latency internet. It's broken the world record for jump. orbital flight turnaround twice it's launched the first successful American lunar lander since 1972, and so much more. In total, this Falcon has delivered 228 metric tons to Earth orbit and beyond. Congratulations to the entire SpaceX team for your part in enabling the science, research, connectivity, and exploration the single Falcon 9 has helped deliver. Turning our attention back to the pad, Above the first stage is the second stage, which has a single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine that ignites after the first stage separates. Stage one, RP-1 load complete. There is the RP-1 load complete on stage one. And again, the second stage on top of that first stage is what will carry today's payload into orbit. And located above that second stage is the payload fairing. At 17 feet in diameter, the carbon composite fairing protects satellites on their way to orbit and is jettisoned approximately three minutes into flight. The fairing halves supporting today's mission are both flight proven with both flying for their fourth time. This mission also marks the 200 mi mission to use flight proven fairings. Now, after separation from the second stage, both fairing halves will return to Earth and will be recovered by our recovery vessel, Bob. We are a little over five and a half minutes away from liftoff, and at this point in the countdown, we are waiting for the clamp arms to begin opening up beneath the fairing and for the transporter erector to begin to retract away from the vehicle in preparation for liftoff. You might notice that since this, it, we are not attempting to recover the first stage, you will see that the landing legs and grid fins are not installed on this particular booster. Now we are waiting. Okay, pressurizing for strong back retract. You heard that call out. We have begun pressurizing for strong back retraction 
and we are waiting for this clamp arms below the fairing to begin to open in preparation for the strong back to lean away from Falcon 9. Strong back retract has started. That's the call out for the strong back retraction sequence starting. And you'll see those clamp arms right below the Falcon 9 fairing begin to slowly open here. There you can see those clamp arms slowly opening up. And in just a few moments here, that truss structure next to the Falcon 9 will begin to slowly recline in preparation for liftoff. There you can see the strong back slowly leaning back from Falcon 9. Now both the first and second stage of, of Falcon 9 are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Now both the first and second stages should finish loading propellant about a minute apart from each other. And the first stage should be wrapping up in just a few seconds here at T minus three minutes with the second stage following at about a minute after that at T minus two minutes. Stage one locks load complete. There is that call out for stage one locks loading complete. Stage two following at T minus two minutes. And at T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. And this means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. And just inside of T minus two seconds, we will light the Merlin 1D engines for liftoff. Now the vehicle continues to be healthy and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues. Weather is green and the range is ready to support a liftoff at 8.34 p.m. Eastern time. We do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time if we don't lift off as scheduled today for any reason. Stage two locks load complete. There is that call out for stage two liquid oxygen loading complete. We are now fully loaded with over a million pounds of liquid oxygen and kerosene propellant on Falcon 9 first and second stages. And that white cloud you see on the left of your screen is uh, normal and expected. It is venting from the transporter erector liquid oxygen line. Now this next major event will happen in just about 30 seconds where Falcon 9 will go into Ground startup. Gas, and that is when the internal flight computers of Falcon 9 will take over the countdown. Preparation for launch. Falcon 9 is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. The first and second stages are pressurizing for launch and we're waiting for that final go from the launch director. Uh, Countdown Falcon and Galileo, go for launch. You heard that final go for launch from the launch director. All systems are go for a launch of Falcon 9 and Galileo L12. T minus 30 seconds.
Tim on D chamber prior to Sama. Power and telemetry nominal. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from pad 39A and throttled down in preparation for max Q in just about 10 seconds here. Falcon and 9 is supersonic. Now Falcon 9 is supersonic and heading into max Q, which is the highest amount of aerodynamic pressure that it sees during ascent. Max Q. There is that call out for max Q. Falcon 9 has just passed through the maximum period of aerodynamic pressure. Now, with that call out, we have three events coming up in quick succession, starting with main engine cutoff, or MECO, followed by stage separation and SES-1, or second engine startup-1. Main engine cutoff, or MECO, is where all nine of the M1D engines on the first stage will shut off to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation, which is where the Come first back, stage... Jill. Second and second stage separate from each other with the second stage continuing to second engine startup one. And this is where that single MVAC engine of the second stage will light up and propel the second stage to orbit. Now, in addition to these three major events, the fairing halves will separate less than a minute after second engine startup one. So keep an eye out for all of these events coming up in just a few seconds here. Now, as a reminder, we are not attempting to land our first stage today as our mission requires more performance, so it will use up the, the fuel typically reserved for landing to complete the mission. We will also not have any stage two views of separation at the request of our customer, but we should see main engine cutoff and stage separation in just a few seconds here. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. There was main engine cutoff and stage separation, and you heard that call out for second engine startup of our MVAC engine. And we again, we are expecting to hear that call out for fairing separation in just a few uh, seconds here. It should be in about 30 seconds. Again, we will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves once they fall back down to Earth using our recovery ship, Bob. Again, we are waiting for fairing separation. We won't have live views of that, but we will get the call out from Mission Control that you see on your screen. Fairing separation confirmed.